These here are notes on creating Bohr model diagrams. The Bohr model was created to show how electrons orbiting around the nucleus have different amounts of energy. They fill the levels closest to the nucleus first and use the other levels further out if needed. Each energy level has a certain number of electrons it can hold. The first energy level can hold up to two electrons. The second energy level can hold up to 8 electrons. The third energy level can hold up to 18 electrons. You may need to make that correction on your paper. The electrons in the outermost shell have a special name called valence electrons. These electrons are very important because they dictate a lot of the properties that the element will have. Now let's practice drawing a Bohr model. The instructions say to first draw five protons in the nucleus and label with the charge. So draw five circles and put plus signs inside of them to label them as positive protons. Draw six neutrons in the nucleus and label with the charge. I've drawn six circles inside my nucleus, but I have not labeled them with anything as the neutrons have no charge. Sometimes uh, you may see them labeled with an N or a zero. I just like to leave mine blank. Now for the electrons. The first energy level can hold two electrons. So I've drawn the first energy level and drawn two negative signs because the electrons carry a negative charge. The second energy level can hold up to eight electrons, but we only need three for this particular element. So three more negative signs completes this atom. You can always identify an element by its number of protons. Because this element contains five protons in its nucleus, this element is boron. Our second example asks us to draw three protons in the nucleus and label with the charge. So there's my three positive particles in my nucleus. And here are my four neutrons, which again I've left blank because they carry no charge. The first energy level holds two electrons, which are negative. The second energy level could hold up to eight electrons, but for this particular element, I only need one more for a total of three electrons in this element. This Bohr model represents the element lithium because it has three protons in its nucleus. With our next example, we'll be given the element name and the information from the periodic table, the atomic number, and the atomic mass to first figure out the number of subatomic particles in the element and then ask to draw the model. With chlorine, the atomic number is 17 and the atomic mass is 35. The atomic number will always tell us the number of protons and electrons in the atom. The atomic mass is the total number of particles in the nucleus, which is protons and neutrons. So if we have 35 particles in the nucleus, and we know that 17 of them are protons, the other 18 must be the neutrons. So go ahead and put the protons and the neutrons in the nucleus. I stopped drawing the circles at this point because you really don't have enough space and it's much easier just to label the number with the capital letter abbreviation for that subatomic particle. So P for protons and for neutrons. Now for the electrons. In the first energy level, there can fit two electrons. I like to do the math off to the side just to make sure that I'm keeping track with my electrons as I fill them in the different energy levels. So I start out with 17 electrons. I've put two in the first energy level, so that leaves me with 15 left to put in their energy levels in the, in the orbits around the nucleus. The second energy level can hold eight electrons, so go ahead and draw those in that second level around the nucleus. Now, back to your electron math, you had 15 left, subtract 8 from that total, and now you have 7 electrons left to place in, elect in an energy level. So those last 7 electrons will go in the third energy level. Those outer energy level electrons are called valence electrons. 
The next element that we need to identify subatomic particles for and draw the model is silicone. Silicone's atomic number is 14, which is also the number of protons and electrons. Silicone has an atomic mass of 28, so there are 28 particles in the nucleus. 14 of them are protons, so there are 14 left to be neutrons. So label your 14 protons and 14 neutrons in the nucleus. Then draw the first two electrons in the first energy level. You started with 14 electrons. You drew two in the first energy level, so you have 12 left. Draw eight electrons in the second energy level. You had 12 electrons, then eight went to the second energy level, so you have four left. Those four electrons will go in the third energy level. The electrons in the outermost energy level are your valence electrons. So silicone has four valence electrons.